So this is the barrika that I'm telling you about. Uh, this was like uh, studying and testing. Me, I do everything now with testing. I first of all plant small amount. After it has performed well, I'll know whether to plant it again or not. So we planted this and they performed well. You see, there was 100% per, uh, survival. This is the same thing, although it has not been uh, weeded. So this is the same thing, Bareka. I look for the name in English. Me, I don't know what they are called in English, but I think they are those small spinach that uh, people in other countries call spinach. Yes. So this is some new managus over here that are developing. So these are about one month old. Gosh, I didn't record this. And I told you guys to keep records. So this is our, these are about, they are about weeks old. I should confirm. I don't want to give you details that are incorrect. So here we have some parsley. By the way, guys, this is one crop that can give you profits. Uh, okay, it is not that much profitable if you do not find the right market. But if you take them to these open air markets, and uh, probably it is during the rainy season, they grow so fast. You have watered these only once, and they grow so fast. Their germination is so perfect. But now the market is not that quite amazing. So... But it is good to have different types of crops, you know. So these are our managus, the ones we've been transplanting uh, little by little. And by the way, guys, I'm selling seedlings. If you want seedlings, contact me. I have my number on my Facebook page, Mary Ikegu, the farm girl, K-E. Yes. So to protect your, fr your plants, your managus, your everything from blights and other fungal infections, make sure that you spray your uh, fungicides on time. Do not wait like a whole week the crops have been out in the cold. And then after a week, that is when you are going to spray them. My friend, you're doing you the plants injustice and you should be jailed. <laughs> so this is how the managus are performing. This we planted in a seedbed so that we could uh, transplant. But we have decided to let some of these uh, grow from here and then we see how the performance is going to be so that we can uh, see whether the, the broadcasting method of planting, whether it's going to perform well. But they have I've transplanted most of these managus and I still have quite a large amount to keep transplanting. So if you want some seedlings, I can sell to you. So these are more managus. They have the, they are in the same stage. Yes, but you can see some have developed more than others because we we didn't space them well. They were not properly spa spaced. So that is why you can see that some of these, uh, for example, these ones are very huge, but these ones are very tiny. So that is how we are looking like in terms of managu. These are the ones that we are transplanting. So guys, if you want some managus, I have them. I have the seedlings and you can come by. And you see they are quality seedlings. Look at this. See, this is a managu that you will take to the market and the buyer will be like, Hey, 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 you are care zote. Put me all of them. Yeah, so there is something that I want to tell you about here, and this is this. So in this place, you can tell the difference from those managus over there, and it's just like one foot away with these ones. So these ones are looking like they've been burnt by blight, and they look like... They are not that big. Like they are not big. They are not actually big. You see, they have not been growing well. So what happened here? We have this tap. You see that tap over there? So we have this tap over here. It is passing through this area. And then it broke from here. It was broken from here. So it was pouring out water. And uh, the managus during the germination period, they were getting excess water. So 
some that were not getting the excess water have really germinated and uh, performed well, but others, these that were in a waterlogged area, they didn't perform that good. So this is how they've been looking like. So avoid overwatering your plants, avoid overwatering your managu because they're not going to give you good results. And it is not just managu, any crop, any plant, they want that, you know, good and uh, effective water. Yes. So that is managu. Carrots, although this is just for home consumption, you know, when you, are, you have a farm, should find a way of growing everything you are eating if it can grow in your area. So this is also another way of reducing the cost of uh, home expenses. You don't buy everything and you have a farm. So you can imagine how long we're going to take these carrots for, though I think we should space them a little bit more. So these are just for home consumption. We also have some onions, also for home consumption. It's not for business, this is just for home consumption. And that is how they are looking like. Yeah, we grow everything we eat. We grow what we eat. <laughs> That's our policy over here. We also have some pepper. This is bell pepper. And amazingly, I saw them, they were eaten by birds. When they ripen, they turn red and they are eaten by birds. So this is one of my pest control methods. This is used to control aphids combined with garlic. And then we also combine it with uh, popo leaves. Yeah, those popo leaves, they have th that latex. And it is very, it has some uh, itchiness. It gives somebody itchiness. So that itchiness, you use it, you combine the pepper, I combine the, pe the pepper, the popo, and the garlic and ginger, which I use to control things like thrips, things like uh, aphids, things like mealybugs. Those are the ones that are used to control with this pepper. And also we use them for eating, for home consumption too. Yes. Then we have some kales. These are like, I think, two years old now. They are very old, by the way. So, I told you about planning. And you see, we have different mana we have managus at different stages. So we have the ones that we are harvesting. We have these ones that are in seedling form. So these ones that we are transplanting. We have those ones over there that are germinating. And then we have these ones that are. These are we planted this in on 17th July. 17th July, and today it is on the 20. 27 yeah i think they are now 10 days old and actually they have it's like they have started sprouting actually it's not actually they have sprouted see how they spray they sprout so quickly if you provide them with water you provide them with water you give them manure and then now you give them an adequate spacing to grow look at that i don't know if you can tell those green green things Okay, it can be a combination of both managu and uh, weeds, but let me show you the weeds. Camera, focus. So this is the weed. This that has a round shape. But we also have managu in the same place. This has the, this, this ones with sharp edges. So that is how you tell managu from weeds. The weeds have round shape, but the managus have the sharp edges yeah so that is how we generally looking like and these ones are kills that we have been using for home consumption then they have uh, depleted like they have been here for so long for so long so we, we thought instead of replacing them we just you know plant the managus underneath we water them because you do not have to like finish everything. Imagine if we take all of this and we are using it for home, then we start buying. No, you don't do that. Planning, 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 planning.
so we have some amaranth here and i can tell you guys that this the, these guys are taking forever to grow i don't know why they are delaying so much hey this ancillary if you have if you do not have patience please don't grow these amaranths they are taking forever to grow forever to germinate so this is how they are looking like and i think they've been here for for more than three months more than three months since may may june we are in july and you see at the big one is this they are still very small ones i mean but when they grow they are going to be lasting for quite some time because they they can be harvested like for five to six months So we also have some spring onions, which this time, ha <laughs> ha, let me just laugh at myself. Yes, the cold was so intense, plus it sick. I skipped like one week without spraying these onions. And that's why you can see they burnt. Yeah, they were affected by fungal infection, uh, fungal disease this much. So currently I am trying to really be at it and they have improved. You can imagine from having been burnt so 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 badly and you can spot some green color from these crops. It's it's giving you some hope in the that product that I am currently using because the cold has not reduced. Uh -uh. It has been cold like since since May, since the end of May. Yeah, it has been really intensely cold and I remember even May it was still cold. So, what you do is that even if your crops sometimes they get burnt or they get affected by the fungal infection, don't lose hope so quickly. I was thinking of removing them but then again I decided to try and see if they will improve. Yeah, so those are managus. Uh, over there those are managus and this is some other onions you see so this is how it happens this is how the fungal infection starts you see this black caroling yeah that is how you know you're being affected by fungal infections this is because i was late with one week one week only so be careful if you develop a pro a program of spraying your crops do not like skip it stick to it so then we have uh, some cauliflower here which is i expect to harvest in i was expecting to harvest them in september i'm still i still am <laughs> yes i'm expecting to harvest them in september and this is generally how they are looking like You see these ones I have tried, really tried to protect them from fungal infections. And that's why you see they still have a green and a cute color. The only problem that I had mostly with this was grab worms. Grab worms and cut worms. They have eaten this uh, cauliflower so much. That's why you see some are big and uh, some are big like these ones. But others are very small because now these are the ones that we have been replacing yes you see so if you stick to a good program you will not be affected by fungal infections some of these crops are very sensitive like the onions so you have to be strict so that you do not get affected so these are managus here i had some onions because of how they've been affected by the cold, we decided to just eliminate them and then we plant managus because the managus are not affected by the cold. These are one week old after transplanting. They have to go a period through a period of transplant shock before they start sprouting well. So I hope guys you can see, I have those managus that are sprouting, others are one week old, others are months old. I also have some that I am 
uh, harvesting. So this is what uh, another th idea that we thought because the spring onions are disturbing us so badly, uh, we decided to put some managus in between. We water the managu, the, the spring onions, but essentially we are watering the managu and spraying the managus because the spring onions are such a disappointment. Yeah, they want places with some heat. Those places like uh, coastal areas, those places like Makueni, Watuwa Machakos, the ones who should be planting. So these are some small cauliflower that are way, way, way behind those ones. Yeah, such that I can sell severally to that customer that I will be selling to when I start smelling the cauliflower. And lastly, these are the managus that uh, we, pla we transplanted this in at once the end of June, was it? Uh, it was the beginning of June. My goodness, I should check properly. I don't remember the date well, but I know we planted them towards the end of June. And guys, I love how they are looking. So these ones, we have not even used so much fertilizers. I've only sprayed like twice over that period because managus are not affected that much. No, they're not affected by the cold that much. Neither are they affected by pests. The only pest that affects them mostly is the aphids. And if you good people, good spraying program, like you are spraying after one week, after two weeks, it will not be affected. And when you spot them, in case you spot one uh, aphid on one managu, make sure that you spray all of them. Because it's telling you that these guys are gonna be coming. So this is not broadcasting. We planted one by one, transplanting. Yeah. But we have also tried bro broadcasting to see how it is going to be performing. I love their germination. I love, I just love Managu guys. I just love Managu. They don't have stress. They don't stress you that much like other crops. No, they are friendly. They understand the economies of scale. <laughs> they understand we need to plant profitably. Yes.